thank you that we can gather here this morning, that we can worship you, Lord, for you deserve all our worship and all our praise. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and that you are a glorious God. Thank you that we can proclaim your name. Lord, thank you that we know you and that you know us and chose us, Lord. Yeah, we just pray that yeah, we can use our gifts to minister to others, to reach out to others, and to love you with our gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I think this is very well known, this, uh, this song. So, um, so, yeah, I'd like to see you all doing actions. That would be great. Um, yeah. And, oh, have they got the... Yeah, they have got the music. Do play them really loud. <laughs> okay.
high in our lives, high in our communities, Lord, and, and in the world. Your kingdom come, Lord. Amen. Amen. Do take a seat. You already have. That's great. Uh, and uh, we need to send the children out. So Rebecca is away at the moment. Uh, the family have just gone over to, I think it's Newquay uh, in West Wales. I picked a good week for it, haven't they? Some lovely weather over there. Saw a picture of some um, dolphins splashing around, I think, having a great time. Um, so they're not here this week. Liz Lanny is in charge, I believe, and looking after, thank you, Liz, uh, looking after all the children. Uh, so we're going to send the children out. If you've got any questions or not quite sure where you're going or what you're doing, have a word with Liz sitting here, just standing up now, uh, and uh, she'll point you in the right direction. But let's pray together for our children, young people, as they spend time together this morning. Father God, we thank you for the many young children, uh, for our, our young people uh, in this church. We thank you that our ministry is thriving. We're seeing so many good, fruitful signs of work there. And Lord, we pray that as they meet together this morning, that they'll have a special time, encourage each other, uh, and grow in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so a number of notices to bring to you this week. We have a church meeting for members on Wednesday night here at 7.30. Uh, we really want to prioritize these times. We feel that they're so important for us to gather as church, discern the mind of Christ, uh, really dig into some important issues uh, and make sure that the church is moving uh, together uh, as God is leading us. So please do prioritize that in your diaries. Be here uh, and we'll be sharing together. Uh, for about two hours uh, uh, with some worship and with some, um, some prayer and, and scripture focus as we press into some really important issues uh, in the life of, of the church. We have a prayer day on Friday. Uh, we're connecting with uh, Thy Kingdom Come, uh, as we have for a number of years. Uh, and if you want to uh, get involved in that, there's a really good Thy Kingdom Come app, which you can download. Uh, helps you to pray for people missionally, which is great. Uh, and, and just uh, helps you to, to pray in this important time as we lead up to Pentecost. We've obviously had Ascension Day in the last few days. And Thy Kingdom Come works between Ascension Day uh, and Pentecost. So please do have a look at that app. But we are going to gather on Friday. At 10 o'clock and midday and 4 o'clock in the afternoon, um, we're going to gather here at the church to pray. Uh, and also, uh, there is the opportunity, I think, for uh, an, um, a WhatsApp uh, in the evening, if you want to connect in that way. We're going to have a WhatsApp call in the evening where we can pray together as well. So do look at the weekend update. That gives you a little bit more information about uh, these things, um, and we'll press into these two particularly important uh, things this week in the life of the church. Uh, last week, we finished our series on missional communities, um, and we're continuing with that mission theme today, um, thinking locally and internationally. But we got, uh, everyone got to fill in a card last week about how they might like to serve in one of the four missional communities that we are building. Uh, and uh, if you haven't done that yet, please would you do so. Uh, it would be great to know how God might be giving you a nudge, or just if you want to express an interest in being involved in one of them, it would be great if you would. Uh, we didn't put a box on them to put your name in so you must put your name on them uh, otherwise we won't know what you're saying uh, and also um, if you could just tick one of the missional communities boxes because we want um, everyone to be particularly connected to one uh, so we had a few in this week without names on if you remember not putting your name on last week could you do another one that would be really helpful um, and on Saturday this coming week, uh, we have a, a nice event coming up in which we are all invited. Uh, and so I'm going to ask Phil Lloyd just to nip up quickly. Uh, Phil and Ali got married some time ago, um, but it was during COVID and there was very few people there. Is that right? Um, it was indeed, yeah. I've been told to be very quick. So, um, yeah, Andy married us two and a half years ago and we didn't get to celebrate in the way we wanted. So this is the chance. So on Saturday, it's between 1 and 4 p.m., we really want as many people to come as possible. There will be a bouncy castle. Adults, you can go on as you want to as well. Uh, you know, Ali's decision on that one. But yeah, it'll be really, really good. Um, there is a sign-up sheet at the back. It'll be really good if people could just sign their names. It's bring and share, but don't feel like you have to bring anything. But yeah, we'd really love to see people there. Thank you. 
Thanks, Phil. That's really kind of you to do that. And it, as it was such a small event a couple of years ago, it would be great to celebrate you, uh, celebrate with you on Saturday. I'm going to ask Kim to come and lead us uh, in a bit of a focus in on the different missional partnerships that we have, of which we have quite a number, uh, don't we, Kim? So come and talk to us about that uh, and the work that we are currently doing and a couple of updates. Morning, church. What a beautiful day. What great guests to have with us this morning. So hopefully, um, if we move on to the next slide, uh, there's quite a list of... Uh, missional organizations we support. Some, as we see uh, in the middle, are local missions. So um, Good Soil, Cedar Tree, Two Pennies, Food Bank, The Bridge, St. Paul's Hospital, ho Hostel, sorry, uh, Mag's Day Center, Prison Fellowship, Home for Good, Street Pastors. I was out with the team last night. Had a great evening. Um, and Redeeming Our Communities, just to name a few. But these are the main ones we support financially in the local uh, Worcester area. But of course, in supporting some of these, you can also support overseas uh, world mission organizations. I've got those down the left. We've, we've got our very own Cliff and Geraldine Newham, who are here somewhere, sitting down here, who represent uh, Operation Mobilization. We support Tier Fund. We have Ewan Thompson, Sadly, um, uh, being treated for cancer in Korea at the moment, but he's been doing great world mission uh, on his own, really, uh, for a number of years now. We've got Jess and Raphael Hartman, Hartman who came up, uh, Tim and Dawn's daughter. Um, so from YWAM, uh, doing fantastic work uh, down in Brighton area. And then... Uh, Two that are very close to my heart, Open Doors and CSW. And I'm going to show a little video about uh, CSW shortly, uh, commemorating a, a wonderful young uh, example of Christian uh, values being represented in a daily life, a battle with captivity um, under Boko Haram. Um, Love Russia, another one that's close to my heart. And, of course, we're going to hear from Kwame, shortly about BMS and Peter and Louise Lynch, our mission partners, and um, I'll contact Connie and Peter there, who uh, have been helping us uh, keep in contact. Um, also, we support Evangelical Alliance Forefront Theatre, which was almost a homegrown uh, a mission group, uh, reaching out through uh, comedy drama, uh, Fresh Dreams, and Icing Pop, another uh, locally grown um, mission. And there's a big message here about mission is wherever we are, and we can support mission here at home and abroad. And it's for us to listen to when God nudges us. And I, I will talk very briefly about uh, one of the nudges I've been following up on recently in South America. And of course, we've got uh, Malawi Church Partnership which is quite a significant part of our partnering uh, in the church, uh, which has really come from work that uh, Alan did uh, in his um, pastoral career in the past. So if we move on, um, I should, uh, before I go on to this, I should have mentioned uh, one of the world mission partners I'd like to briefly talk about is uh, Love Russia. And a number of us in the church have been out to Russia to uh, orphanages uh, over there. And I should just say that um, they've just gone through their 30-year celebration. Uh, so they were founded uh, by Noel um, Doubleday about 30 years ago. Sadly, he died a couple of years ago. But his uh, vision grew out of visiting um, orphanages in the, what had been the Eastern Bloc after the wall came down and realizing what a dreadful condition many orf orphans are suffering from a Russian almost coldness of heart towards uh, disadvantaged kids and uh, um, particularly disabled kids. Uh, and uh, the mission has changed slightly uh, recently 
in that now uh, Love Russia is focusing their effort on supporting local Christian groups setting up crisis centers for uh, women with children, and often women who have suffered domestic abuse and violence, because there is an awful lot of alcoholism amongst the male population out in Russia. And it's one of the things I think we'll hear a little more about during the prayers uh, shortly, I think. Um, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a great charity, particularly now that Russia has been seen as a prior state by many people. So people associate Russia with Putin. And what we've got to remember is this actually, met the situation today makes it worse for the poorest, the uh, disabled kids, the orphan kids, whose lives are typically shaped by violence, drug addiction, uh, no future other than through crime. So um, for, me, for me, this is just a wonderful uh, mission, mission group. If we go onto the, um, this, this slide. So uh, about five, six days ago, um, it was the birthday for uh, Leah Sharabu, a young girl, Nigerian girl, who was abducted with about 100 other uh, girls from a, a school in northern Nigeria. The uh, other school girls uh, were given the option, convert to Islam, forget Christianity, convert to, Christi uh, to Islam, and you will be released. Everybody uh, converted to Islam, apart from Leah. So she's still in captivity. In fact, she's now been married to uh, one of her captors, and it's believed she has a f couple of children. But she's stayed firm in her, her faith. So if we could just um, play the video. My birthday, and I've been able to celebrate with friends and family. Uh, but, you know, my birthday is always tinged with sadness because I happen to share a birthday with Leah Sharibu, who is unable today to celebrate like I can with my friends and my family. She was taken um, those years ago. Uh, this is her sixth birthday that she will have remembered in camp. I, I, I hesitate to say celebrated because uh, she's there in captivity and, uh, and we need to remember her. We need to remember that she, in fact, chose. Uh, she had a choice to make. Uh, the group that took her told her that she could be set free and go home to her friends and family so that she could celebrate her birthdays. Uh, but uh, the, the, the price for that was converting to Islam. Leah made a conscious decision not to do that, to stand up for her Lord, which reminds me always of those verses in Philippians, uh, whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What's more, I consider everything a loss uh, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Uh, that sums up what, what Leah has said and what she has done. But we must not forget her today. Uh, let's never forget that she is there. A, a year ago, the chief of the defense staff in Nigeria said that he was aware of plans that were in place for her to be set free. A year later, nothing has happened. But we will not forget her here at CSW. We will continue to pray. We will continue to have hope until the day we see her free. And I urge you and your church, wherever you are in the world today, to pray for Leah Sharibu and, and, and believe uh, that she will be set free. So that was uh, Mervyn Thomas, who founded CSW about, again, 30 years ago. Uh, to stand up to advocate for uh, people being persecuted for their belief and their faith around the world. And sadly, the majority of people being persecuted today are Christians. Um, and uh, Leah uh, has stood up uh, against her captors um, and is uh, holding firm. But many people subside under the, the kind of persecution that's out there today. Um, so... Uh, 
I was going to say that um, before I uh, turn to Psalm 91, uh, for me, if I encapsulate what I think mission is, I believe it's sharing the story of God's love and building his kingdom wherever you are. If we're sitting here in Worcester in relative safety and peace, we can always be encouraging and supporting people overseas. I'm going to hear more about this uh, shortly. Um, so I'm just going to read the first four verses of Psalm 91. The reason Psalm 91 is important, some of you will have seen me testify to the power of this uh, passage last Sunday night at Soul Food. Um, because it became really important for me. I was given it just before I went out to Colombia and South America, and time and time again it came through that God was doing what he says in Psalm 91, which I think is really a message for anybody who is worried about getting involved in mission. I just need to manage the technology now. That one? Yep. Good. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. So please take heart. I saw this in action while I was in uh, Colombia. And uh, God reinforced the message. We just avoided being ambushed at one point. Uh, we went into a house, and as we walked out, we saw Psalm 91 over the door. <laughs> and we knew <laughs> God was just saying, I was there. I was looking after you. So, so please... Take heart, get involved, wherever you are, whatever you do, whatever your skill, whether you're an accountant, an engineer, whatever you are, God, God will use you to build his kingdom. So, uh, let's just... Turn our eyes to the Lord and um, let's pray together. Lord, as we spend this time with you, Heavenly Father, help us to focus on you. Calm our minds, remove any distractions. Open our eyes and hearts to hear you speak. Firstly, we want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and unfailing love. To, to all of your children across the world. We thank you for all those serving in mission in various ways, those who are known and all those who may go unknown. Thank you that you know each one. Bless them and enable them to meet the demands they face in their mission fields and communities. Thank you for the work of BMS, World Mission, for its workers and partners who strive every day to make Jesus known and share the full life he brings. Thank you for their heart for sharing the gospel, their heart for bringing hope to the world, and for their heart to help others on the journey. Thank you that they provide help where it is most needed, reaching out to the most marginalised people in the world. Thank you for their vision for a world made better through Christ's grace. We remember before you Peter and Louise Lynch serving in Bangladesh with BMS. Thank you that they, along with a small team, were able to reach out to those affected by the monsoons last summer to provide those who needed support, not only with food and water, but pastorally through spending time with those affected, listening and loving. Continue, Lord, to use this couple and those they serve alongside to reach out to those in need. And Lord, raise up more workers for your harvest fields 
in Bangladesh and across the world. We also thank you, Lord, that Peter and Louise will be on home assignment in the UK next month. May their visits to different churches provide a stirring up of hearts in those in the congregations and also encouragement for Peter and Louise. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We bring before you Love Russia and thank you for all those serving within this missional community. We praise you, Lord, that Love Russia have celebrated a 30-year anniversary. Thank you for your provision for another year, enabling them to meet all their financial commitments and to help fund various projects. We pray, Jehovah Jireh, that you would provide increased financial support to this charity and that as they join the Keswick Convention that new viable relationships will form with those who share their heart for Russia and its people. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray, Lord, that you would draw close to those known to love Russia who need your help. Miracle working God, we ask that you move in power in the lives of Nastya and her daughter Katya. We pray for miraculous healing for Nastya from ovarian cancer and for Katya and the congenital condition she lives with. We pray for financial provision so that they may access the medical help they need. Thank you that Nastia knows you as her Lord and Saviour. Increase her faith. Draw near to her and Katya. Comfort, strengthen and uphold them. And we think of baby Dima, born prematurely last year, who remains in hospital um, and has recently been diagnosed with cerebral palsy and issues with vision and hearing. Lord, bless him and keep him and make your face to shine upon him. Draw near to his mother, living at the Women's Crisis Centre. She's clearly been through so much already. We pray she would know your presence, love and hope. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for each of the orphan mum families known to love Russia. You are father to the fatherless and defender of widows. Lord, where there is not enough, multiply the little these families have, just as you did the widow at Zarapath and her son, so that all their needs are met during a time where they too are facing ever-increasing price rises and a cost-of-living crisis. We pray too for continued safety from mobilisation of the men serving you in this ministry. Their hearts are to serve you, not for war. Prince of Peace, we pray for a desperately longed-for end to this war. You, God, are love. And we pray that love would prevail in Russia and its people would know that they are not hated by the rest of the world, but that we are earnestly praying for them. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for the work of OM. We particularly remember co-founder George Verwer and thank you for his faithful service. We pray that you would draw near to his family as they grieve and that you would bless them. We thank you for Cliff and Geraldine Newham who work with OM. We pray that you would continue to bless the work Cliff is involved in, training new mission workers, helping them to improve their English language. We thank you for all the trainees that you have called and chosen. Enable each trainee to learn what you want to teach them. We pray that the staff will serve you with all their heart, soul, mind and strength and that there would be an increase in staff. Lord, we ask that you provide clarity for Geraldine as the organisation restructures. Move her into the roles you have for her. Her heart is to serve you in ways that you have gifted her. Thank you for the work of CSW, Open Doors and other organisations who fight for justice for persecuted Christians across the world. Thank you that they represent your help and hope to those suffering. You have given them a heart to do good, seek justice, correct oppression. We pray that you would establish the work of their hands. We lift up tear funds to you and thank you for the work they do tackling poverty, responding to disaster and challenging injustice. 
thank you too for their passion for creation care and how they stand up and make themselves heard fighting for climate action. May they know your power and see the impact of prayer and perseverance in pursuing your will for all of your creation. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for Jess and Raf Hartman and for the work they do with YWAM. This worldwide missionary organisation serve you in so many ways and in so many different countries and cultures. We thank you for all the work they do and pray your continued blessing on them as they reach out to others and show them your love. Bless Jess and Raf as they continue to serve you, Lord, in this ministry. Lord, our hearts are breaking for you and Thomas Thompson, um, a loved member of this church family who is obediently serving you in Korea. We ask that you draw near to him as he grieves for his mother who died recently. And we also ask for your healing to be poured out in power upon him. You know what is happening with his body and the cancer he is fighting. You know him intimately. Every hair on his head you have numbered. Lord, move in power, we pray. We long for a miracle for him. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Finally, Lord, we ask you to help us to see this world as you see it, to love each one of your children as you love them, to be your hands and feet, being obedient to your call and serving you in whatever way you have gifted or equipped us for your glory. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
you know our heart. Lord, I just just want to um, yeah, just pray um, that you would open our ears and our heart, Lord, to hear what you have to say to us today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mission. What is mission? It's over 200 years of matching God's word with deeds. It's our storied Baptist history. And a world still in need. We're shaped by our past as we look to the future. It's you and it's us. It's we working together. As BMS World Mission, uniting believers to change the world. Will you join us? In over 30 countries, from cities to the most remote places, we tackle injustice and suffering in desperate places. We walk with refugees and those forced to leave home. We share the good news of Jesus where it's never been known. And why do we do all that we do? To make real the fullness of life and the hope that knowing Jesus will bring. Changing the world is no small task, but through prayer, through partnership, through giving, we'll do more than all we can imagine or ask. Together, we let children be children by building pathways to school. We care for God's planet and so grow, reap food for all. We deliver aid when disaster hits and help prepare for the worst. We plant churches and seedlings to nourish spiritual thirst. We train local medics to heal lives marked by deep strife. We see communities flourish and improve quality of life. Together we can do all this. And to do it all, we need you. Because while God calls us, we'll answer. Until his work is through. Thank you so much. Thank you for that lovely worship. Um, what's the name? Vicky, that's right. And thank you, Kim, um, for sharing on all that you are doing in this lovely church. I'm going to do something. Is that, is that okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do something I only do in my home church. And that is to sing. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a song in my heart. We declare your majesty. We proclaim that your name is exalted. For you reign, magnificently rule, victoriously end, your power show through all the earth. And we exclaim, our God is mighty, lift up your name. For you are holy, we sing it again, all honor and power, in adoration, we bow before your throne. When we exclaim, our God is mighty, lift up your name. For you are holy, sing it again, all honor and power, in adoration, we bow before your throne. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for your incredible love for each one of us. Love graphically demonstrated on the cross of Calvary. In that whilst we were yet sinners, Jesus gave his all 
for us. That we might be ransomed and redeemed from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of love, of light, and of life. And Lord, we who turn away from you, now we turn towards you with a cry in our hearts, and we say, Lord, our hearts long for you, our spirit yearn for you, that you rend the heavens and pour out your spirit upon us. For the call to which you call us, we recognize that we of ourselves are not able to fulfill it. For we have a proclivity to always turn away from the path of righteousness and the ways of life. And so, God, we pray that you will pour out your spirit upon us, that your spirit may hold us and rivet us into your love and on the way of life. Father, as we come to you this morning, we ask that our hearts be open, that you will plant your word deep in us, words that will shape us and fashion us in the likeness of Jesus, that we may bear forth witness for you and the light of the beauty of your glory in our community. Lord, we come this morning, and our heart cry is that, Will you test our attitudes and our actions? Will you renew our minds by your word that we may follow your plans and fulfill your purposes? We pray that, Lord, will you reveal to us the things that you have in store for us. Remove the scales that blinds us and give us hearts that pants after you, hearts that beats for our community, hearts that cry out for the redemption of the nations. Lord, we pray for this church, a pillar and ground of truth, a witness for Christ in this community. Would you pour out your spirit upon the pastoral team and the leadership of this church, upon the staff team, and would you stir the gifts of your spirit amongst us, that we may employ each one of them and deploy them for your service. Would you make us a people that bring transformation wherever you send us. We ask the Lord, as much as we desire to serve you, we recognize that we're held down and held captive by many things in our individual lives. We pray that this morning your spirit will move in this place and break those chains and shackles that holds us captive and deprive us from maximizing our all for you. We pray, Lord, that would you minister into our hearts and bring healing where we are hurting. Come, sweet spirit of God. Would you reveal Jesus to us that we may behold his glory that the things that captivate us may lose their significance, that we may behold the one who is invincible and invisible, that we may stand on the rooftop and declare him to the nations that indeed his reason is real and is here. Would you remove the veil that we may see him for who he is, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the I am who I am. The one before whom impossible things become possible. The one whose love held him to the cross because he saw our sin and wanted to pay the price for it. The one who paid the debt he did not owe and paid the debt we could not pay. Would you open our eyes that we may behold the lover of our soul, our good shepherd, the one who calls us to follow him in humble obedience. Spirit divine, come do what only you can do in this place. Let none go back the same way we came as you move with power and with your love, as you move in gentle ways and in powerful ways, as you move in ways that each one of us can understand and appreciate and respond to, would you, Spirit divine, do what only God can do in this place? Set our hearts on fire and send us forth from this place into the mission field of God, both locally and globally. Spirit divine, come, 
come have your way. We welcome you. We honor you. We love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray. And if you believe it, say a big amen. amen. That doesn't sound like a big amen. amen. If you believe it and agree with me, say a big amen. amen. Is that a Worcester thing? <laughs> or is that an English thing? If you agree with me, say a big amen. amen. Come on. Hallelujah. A resounding amen. Amen simply means we are in agreement with heaven. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Let the things that we say, let us see it. Hallelujah. Well, it's my pleasure to be with you this morning. And it's very interesting. You've been talking about Peter Lynch and Louis Lynch. I manage Peter Lynch and Louis Lynch in Bangladesh. I was in Bangladesh just, uh, was it this year, actually, in February, and uh, spent some time with them, and we went to some amazing places and did some, saw God do some amazing work, and we are very privileged and to know that Worcester Baptist, St. Peter Worcester Baptist Church, uh, sorry, got it all mixed up, but you understand. <laughs> You stand with BMS in supporting Peter and Louise Lynch in bringing God's love, God's goodness, and to folks in Bangladesh. And I'm confident they've been enriched um, by the people they interact with there. And I'm hopeful that when they come and visit, they'll bring some of that blessing to you. Let me begin by, well, let me tell you what I'm going to do first. How long do we have? Thank you very much. I like that. A blank check. So relax <laughs> because God is in charge. <laughs> well, as I'll tell you what I'm going to do, and uh, I'm going to speak briefly. And as part of my speaking, I'm going to talk about an introduction. And then I'm going to give you the main content. And in the main content, I have three points under the main content. And you will get to know that very shortly. And then I will have the conclusion. So very simple, straightforward format. Is that okay? <laughs> it wouldn't be the talking that would be two hours later. If God takes over, well, he takes over, isn't it? All right. I like to be done out of my job, so trust in God. Let me start off by telling you a very funny story. There's a story, now this is a fictitious story. It's a story about three ministers. One is a Catholic priest, a Baptist minister, and a charismatic minister. You may have heard this story before. Just hold on, okay? Don't give it away. Anyway, it's a fictitious story. So they happen to all die on one day, and they appear before the gates of heaven. And Peter was like, you know what? Your mansions are not prepared yet. And thinking, what do I do with these three ministers whilst I get their mansions ready? So he had this fantastic idea. I'll get Satan to have them for a while whilst their mansions are being prepared, okay? Since I'm on the lapel microphone, I feel the freedom to step off this platform. Is that okay with you? Thank you very much. Okay. But climbing back here will be just difficult. Would that mess up your recording? Is that cool? So can I move this as well? Thank you very much. Just sorry, I'm just kind of like doing everything you guys don't do. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Thank you. Excellent. Now, I think that would be perfect. So, whilst the Satan came for these three guys, but shortly after Satan came back to and um, Peter and said, Peter, Peter, please, I don't want these guys anymore. Have them back. So Peter was like, what did they do wrong? So Satan said, now, the Catholic priest, he's messing my business up, preaching the message of forgiveness to everyone in my domain, and I don't like that. It's not good for business, so take him. And the Baptist minister is complicating the case by preaching the message 
of forgiveness, uh, of repentance to everyone. The worst of these three is the charismatic preacher. He has preached and raised enough offering to put air condition in hell. Uh, why do I share this story? It's a fictitious story. But if people can catch a vision, even in hell, then we can catch a vision whilst we have life, whilst we have time, whilst we're here. But I'm excited about this church as I look at the many things you're involved in, your involvement in world mission, your involvement in global, uh, local mission, your involvement with other organizations. It's wonderful as I hear about your uh, preparation and planning to pray and join in with others to seek the face of God and bring God's power into human life. I am encouraged that this is the pillar and ground of truth, a place where you desire will be an oasis where people will come and find spiritual nourishment, a place where people will come and connect with God, a place where people will come and recognize that God loves them, God cares about them, God knows their name, and irrespective of what they're going through, God has a plan for each one of them. That's a great place to be in. And our, my prayer for you is that, that you will continue to open your heart and your spirit for God to keep stirring his vision in your heart. Listen to this. What God has for each one of us is beyond our comprehension. He said in his word, eyes have no sin, ears have no head, neither enter into the heart of any man or woman the things that God has in store for us. But these things are revealed by the Holy Spirit. But only those whose hearts are open to the Spirit can catch them. So, for all that you celebrate, your best is ahead of you. Oh, you should have said amen at this point. <laughs> all right, so let's, let's have some ground rules. I'm different from Andy. First of all, he's taller than me. <laughs> but we are we share the same kindred spirit. When I say something you like, this is the house of the Lord. There is freedom here. Uh, Sunak is not in charge in this place. Jesus is in charge. So you can say amen. There will be no taxation. <laughs> so when I say something you and agree with, with me, say amen. Is that okay? Praise God. That's wonderful. <laughs> Did we read the passage? No. <laughs> okay, this is very interesting. Let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 1. And I'll be reading from the message translation. Verse 6 to 11. When they were together, for the last time they asked, Master, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Is this the time? He told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you will get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. These were his last words. As they watched, he was taken up and disappeared in a cloud. They stood there, staring in the empty sky. Suddenly, two men appeared in white robes. They said, you Galileans, why do you just stand here looking up at an empty sky? This very Jesus, who was taken up from among you to heaven, will come as certainly and mysteriously as he left. Amen. Amen. 
Jesus, when he ascended into heaven, promised the disciples his church. The people redeemed with his precious blood. The people who have tasted and seen that God is good whose name are written in the Lamb's book of life, whose heart beats with the passion of the cross. He said to them, you will be my witnesses because I will give you power when the Holy Spirit comes on you so you can do that witnessing work effectively. The Jesus gave the church and responsibility and assignment. The church has only one message, is to preach Jesus Christ crucified and risen. It is in the preaching of Jesus crucified and reason that the power of salvation is released to bring the hearts of men and women back to God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Therefore, we are not ashamed of it. Our message is not to talk how, it's not to talk about what, what, what we have achieved. It's not to talk about where we have been. It's not to talk about what our qualifications are. It's simply to talk about the Jesus, the Savior of the world, who loved us and gave himself for us. It may sound foolish sometimes, but therein lies the power of God. It is simple, not complicated, but oftentimes with a lot of our learning and theology, we try to complicate a very simple matter. I've seen how powerful the gospel is when you just talked about Jesus who loves us, and he demonstrated that love through his death and his resurrection. And depending on the Holy Spirit to help you make it appropriate and relevant in various contexts. But the message is the same. Its application may vary and be different depending on context. And that is the sword the Spirit wields to open people's heart to receive the life of God. Thank you. And to this, we are called to be witnesses. Witnesses. A witness is a person who has seen, has been there, has handled, speaks from a personal perspective. But we can only speak of the things we have experienced. We can only be witnesses of things we have experienced. It is impossible to be a witness for Jesus if you have not tasted of his love, if you have not been washed by his blood, if his spirit is not in your heart, if you don't know his gift of eternal life. It is absolutely impossible to talk about it. You can't talk about the fun that is in church because you've been here. You can talk about how wonderful Vicky sounds because you've heard her. You can talk about how, yeah, Andy tries to play the bass guitar because you've seen him. <laughs> he did well. He did good. You did good. <laughs> and that would be a true story, by the way. But you can't talk about Jesus and his love if you've not experienced it. And my prayer is that if you're here today and you've been coming to church, thank God for that. But oh, why don't you taste and see? Why don't you receive it in your own heart? Why don't you join in the singing and the chorus of the hallelujah? Because it comes from somewhere deep within, not because you're taught to say it as a church. And so there will be an invitation today that you also will join in with the host of heaven and taste of the goodness of, you know, I just feel that joy for you as I talk about this. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the greatest thing that could ever happen to anyone on the face of the earth. We may not have the same bank balance. We may not have the same qualifications, but we can have the same blessing of salvation through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, Jesus said, I want you, if you have received this, 
to be my witnesses. And interestingly, watch, he says in Jerusalem. He was talking to the disciples whilst he was in Jerusalem, and then to Judea, and then to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Right. My question is this. How do we, St. Peter's Baptist Church, Worcester, how do we, a people who love God, how can we be witnesses in our local community? And how can we participate in God's global mission? That is the question. And to this, I have three simple suggestions. Now, these suggestions are not things new. So it's not going to be surprise, surprise. It's not going to be very fanciful. It's not going to be something that, wow, this just blew our mind. I mean, this guy is God. It's amazing. No, because God's always reaffirming the things that he's already told us. And the reason he does that is so we would do something about it. It's my praise that you just hear one thing today, that you will rise up and take action with that one thing. For it profits nothing to hear so much and do, and do nothing about it. But if you can hear just one thing, that you will rise up and act accordingly. To God be the glory. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. And so, these are my three suggestions. The first one is partnership. You're already, partner, you're already partnering people around the world. And that's wonderful. But there is a partnership of the Spirit. A partnership with the Holy Spirit. And that is a different kind of partnership. Because that is not program-led, even though programs may be involved. That is not a project-led, even though a project may be a byproduct of that partnership. But it's a partnership of the Spirit that comes through prayer through silent moments of hearing what the Spirit is saying. Often Jesus will say, he who hasn't hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. A partnership within your own personal life and corporately as a church. What is the Spirit saying to you? What is God doing in your life? What is God revealing to you? I like to be very strategic because I realize that I cannot do all things. And so i rather make just one phone call that is inspired by the Holy Spirit than make lots of phone calls that may be according to my own programming and plan. And that one phone call that is in obedience to an inspiration of the Spirit will do a lot more. But that comes with partnership to discern what is the Spirit saying. And that's why I love the, the, the invitation to join in prayer, to hear. It's in that place our hearts are open to God. I'll tell you a story from Bang Bangladesh. One of the, one of the BMS supported partner workers. His name is Barnabas. He's an incredible young man. And Peter, Peter and Louise work quite closely with him. He is the uh, mission coordinator for our partner in Bangladesh. And he came from a Muslim background. One time he was, there was a lot of persecution where he he, where he was ministering, um, and he got a death threat about a service, and about a service he was going, he was going into, and many told him, "Don't go into that service uh, because this war they've planned to do against you." But as he prayed, he felt Psalm 91, so he went into the service. Lo and behold, whilst in the service, two people sent to come and eliminate him came into the service. But at the moment, at the time they came, 
the church was in prayer. But they chose the time of prayer because, you know, as Christians, Baptist Christians, we are taught that when you pray, you close your eyes. So they chose the moment of close your eyes. So they will sneak him, shoot at him, and then run away. When they came, they could not find him. They looked everywhere. He was not there. Guess where he was? He was behind the pulpit, kneeling down, praying to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> A partnership with the Spirit does wonders. It helps us to do what God requires per time. So our efforts are approved and authenticated by God. It doesn't mean it's going to be a bed of roses. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. He will lead you through the wilderness. He will take you from one place and transport you to another place. But he will be with you. And that partnership of the Holy Spirit is so critical for each one of us. And we can only develop that in moments of personal times of prayer, of reflection, and corporately. That's what would direct how we channel our resources. Just recently, one of our Baptist churches, uh, they felt led in prayer to partner with BMS specifically for work in Thailand. That was fantastic. So I met with them because I manage the least evangelized program of BMS work. So all the mission workers under the least evangelized, which includes um, Peter and Louise, uh, I manage them. And so I came to them and I brought options. And I told them, go and pray about this. Let's not just choose because this sounds great and grandiose. Let's choose because you feel led. And I had a meeting with them and spoke to their leadership team and then explained how the work, we go about the work. And I've left them to go and pray and come back with a response. A partnership with the Spirit is very vital. When he, the Spirit, comes upon you, he will give you power to be my witnesses. There are many places we can be witnesses, but there is a place that the Spirit will direct you to be a witness. That takes a lot of burden. You know, sometimes when it comes to uh, sharing the good news with people, people freak out because they are like, you know what, this is not me. Relax. Chill out. Nobody's asking you, go and knock on people's door. What if they pour water on my face? Relax. If it's not your thing, Relax. Now, I'm an evangelist, and I'm telling you to relax. Relax. But rather, instead of heaping a lot of pressure on yourself, oh, I must talk to somebody about Jesus today, why don't you just say, Holy Spirit, what would you like me to do? Who would you like me to speak to? Where would you like me to be? And he will put an impression in your heart, and if you don't hear anything, relax. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, relax. I said, look at your neighbor. He said, neighbor. <laughs> Is that a Worcester thing? You don't look at your neighbor? Don't look at each other. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Look at me and tell me, relax. Thank you. That's good. I like that. So partnership with the Holy Spirit. There are all sorts of partnerships. And we thank God for your partnership with BMS. The second point I would like to mention from this passage is discipleship. Now, I feel quite strongly about this point, discipleship. Discipleship is about investing in others, in their relationship with God, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Discipleship. Sometimes we think of discipleship as about knowing a lot of scriptures and the theology and the background behind the book of 1 Peter and 2 Peter and the, uh, the doxology of Rome, Romans and the genesis of John and the Apostle. Uh, you know, we, yeah, just 
All of that may be good, but that's not necessarily discipleship. Discipleship, as we saw Jesus do it, is he poured his life into the lives of others. The 12 men he called to be close to him. Who have you been discipling? For the many years you've heard God's word, who are you discipling? Who are you investing in? Whom are you sharing with? Who is learning from you in an intentional way? That is the question. That's what discipleship is about. And I want to suggest something to this wonderful family of God that as you think of local ministry and participating in God's global mission, as you think of 100 years from now, 50 years from now, what would your ministry be? What legacy are you going to leave behind? Then I encourage you, invest, disciple the younger generation. Disciple those in their 20s, those who have just come out of university, disciple them. Disciple those who are in university and in secondary school, disciple them. Disciple those in primary school. We have a fantastic example in, our, in my home church. Now, I mention my home church because I know what I'm saying is true. I'm a witness of it. We have uh, a bivocational, so he's not a full-time minister. He's a pharmacist, but he's a pastor of the young professionals. In fact, we have two of them. One of them is uh, the assistant is a, is, a, is a deputy head teacher in the secondary school. But they are recognized as pastors in the church. They're not paid. They have their vocation, and, but they have the opportunity to invest in the lives of their peers. And they are mentored by the senior pastors in the church. And so the young people often, you know, we talk about generational gap. They can connect. Young people sitting here maybe will not connect with the way I'm speaking. When I go to the youth church, I speak in, I use different vocabulary and different way of speaking. This is my adult language. <laughs> so invest in the young people. Then we have what we call the bridge. So this will be from your 13 years old to, um, I think, 18 years old. Well, I think to those in 20, right? And we have a pastor for them as well. And... They have a whole leadership team there that is investing in these young people. And their pastors and leaders are being served and discipled by the other senior ministers in the church. We invest in the young people. And we have a, a whole fantastic children's ministry. And even that, with all of that, we still trust in God that our young people will go through knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. So discipleship is very, very powerful. It is what we call making disciples who make disciples. Are you with me? And that happens very relationally. It's just have one or two people that you intentionally invest in and share life with them, that they may learn from you and you learn from them. One of the things that I really value and I find very powerful in the church is when older people invest in younger people. I remember when I, I did my training at Spurgeon's College and in my formative years, I went to preach at this Baptist church and there was a very feisty lady elderly woman there called Peggy. Peggy was short, she was small, but she was on fire for Jesus. And Peggy wrote a book of poems. And the first day Peggy saw me, she said, 
I want you to have one of my books. And I use her poems often uh, in my messages. It was a short time I met Peggy, and it wasn't long before she passed, but I'm telling you the story today because, in a, in a way, she discipled me. It wasn't for long, but she invested in me. Let's invest in people, particularly this church, in young people. Hallelujah. Oh, at this point, you could have said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Are we together? Yeah. Are we on the same page? Yeah. Shall I continue yeah. for the next hour? <laughs> okay. I won't do that. <laughs> this is my last point. Apprenticeship. So we've talked about partnership, discipleship, and apprenticeship. What do I mean by that? And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses. It is in that partnership we learn. Apprenticeship, what are, the idea there is to learn. It's to learn from the Holy Spirit. And it's to learn from the community of faith. Never come to the place when you think I've got it sorted out. Oh, my theology is fixed. My eyes are dotted, my T's are crossed. I understand the Trinity. I can explain it to you. When you wake me up, I can tell you and give you the whole spiel about Trinity. I can tell you why Jesus came and the Holy Spirit has now come. No, don't do that. Even as much as you know, there is still a little bit more you need to know. If we're going to be a church that is locally planted and locally rooted and making impact globally, we need to be apprenticed of the Holy Spirit. Oh, there are things I'm desiring to see God do that I'm yet, I'm yet to experience. I mean, have you been in a place, did you hear, did you read in the Bible that Jesus, the Holy Spirit picked up Philip and moved him from one place to another place? By then, aeroplanes were not inv invented. He just disappeared. Now, <laughs> I'm not saying that will happen to you, <laughs> but I'm just saying there are things of God's spirit that we can learn. We can be apprenticed. We can allow God to teach us. We can learn from one another. The experiences that people in this place have had in ministry. And we can bring those experiences humbly. One of our challenges is that we always, our egos and logos are the problem. Oh, you should have said amen at this point. <laughs> our egos gets in the way. I know this. I want to teach it to you. So you sit down. And listen to me. And our other ego is like, no, you're not teaching me anything. Because what you know, I know too. Or I can read it from somewhere else. So my friend, get out of my way. And that's a problem. So the teacher is arrogant. The student is proud. And pride is taken over everywhere. And nobody's going anywhere. But if we let the humility of the spirit. Jesus, even though he was God, he did not find it something to wrestle for, but he humbled himself in obedience to the point of death. And in humility, God exalted him to the place, highest place, and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that the na mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And if you believe with me, amen. say amen. amen. Let's be apprenticed. The land. You have a gift you want to use Learn how to use it. Learn how to serve in a way that builds people up and not tear people down. You want to be an usher. Learn how to welcome people in and not drive people away. Because there's a way you can smile 
when the person come in sees you, they want to come back again. So that smile was very, I want to see that smile again. Just because of your smile, they will come back. Amen. The way you welcome someone, it makes them feel you, are, you recognize me. You see me. That I'm just, just not just a number walking through. You make me feel this is the house of God. Let's be apprentices. The land. What is it you're going to learn today? What are you going to humble yourself to learn? There are those who, I've come across people who want to teach the Bible, but they don't want to learn from anybody else. So they sit in their ivory towers with their lots of concordances and lots of commentaries. And who, who authored those commentaries? Nobody knows. There are, there's a lot of information out there. And you may be reading some stuff that is really dangerous and shouldn't be mentioned in the midst of other people. But because you don't want anybody to teach you, you're just creating a whole lot of mess. Have you come across people like that before? Or is this just me? Amen? Okay, that means you're in agreement with me. So, partnership, discipleship, and apprenticeship. Let's humble ourselves under the spirit of God. As we are here right now, I just feel God is, God's spirit is ministering to people's hearts and talking to you and stirring something in you and bringing some old fires back. For some of you, some memories, old memories are just coming back. Visions of things that you were involved in are coming back. Things that you let go some time ago are coming back. You feel Ooh, there's a spark. You feel there's no, there's an oomph. Something is staring. Now, these are not just my words. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not because I'm clever. It is God's Spirit at work in you. And I don't want you to lose that by focusing on me. I want you to take hold of it and let God do something with you, in you. Right here, right now. Hallelujah. In conclusion. Let me tell you another funny story. There's a story of a man and his wife and a stray dog. So he was at home one day, the man was out, and they saw this stray dog come up, his drive, and so he gave it food and gave it water, and the stray dog stayed for a while and then left. And this went on for a while, and his wife said, you know what? I've had enough of this stray dog coming and patching in our home. Please get rid of this stray dog. We don't know where it's coming from. We don't know where it's carrying. So he said to her, the, the wife said to the husband, take it and drive one hour and just drop it off, and then come back. So he did. And by the time he got home, the stray dog was walking up the drive. So the wife said, didn't you just take the stray dog away? He said, I did. Okay. So the next day, he said, take the stray dog, drive as far as you can go, crisscross all the country roads, drop the dog, and come back home. So he did. After he dropped the dog, he tried to find his way he couldn't. So after a long time, he called his wife. I'm lost. Is the stray dog back home? She said, yes. <laughs> Put the dog on the phone. I need directions back home. <laughs> the reason why I'm sharing this story is very simple. Is this. We need God's direction. There is a place God wants to take this church as a corporate entity. But there is a place God wants to take you as an individual. Amen. A place in Christ. There are gifts, abilities. You will receive power. You have the ability and capability to be my witness. 
There are things, there's stuff going on in your life right now. You've been talking to God about it, and he said, I've heard you. I want to give you direction. I want to do something about it. And the question is, would you open up? Would you let me in, in this place? As we we'll worship, would you let God's spirit come in and touch you? Would you let him bring the fire back? Would you let him give you joy and peace? Would you let him take away that worry and that anxiety? Would you let him just come and encourage you and build you up? And stand with Pastor Andy and say, Andy, we, we can do this for Jesus. Where you've been fearful and anxious and you look at the list and say, wow, how can we? We're involved in so much. But there is yet more God wants to do with you. Would you let Jesus come in? Would you stand to your feet for a moment? Is it okay for the keyboardist? You guys come back, please. Sometimes we are mesmerized by the spectacular. We miss the simple command of God that brings the blessing. Their, their disciples were standing watching the empty sky. The spectacular of Jesus, the spectacle of Jesus being taken up into heaven so mesmerized them, they forgot the command that go and wait for the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father to come upon you. They forgot the, the simple command that you will receive power and be my witnesses. Amen. So, in the sacredness of this moment, in this divine space, would you let God just show you the simplicity of Jesus? Would you let him come in and just, what's on your heart? Would you lift it up before him? Hallelujah. And so as we pray, uh, we'll get to a point. And I would like to pray for the sick. I'd like to pray for anybody. I love to pray. We love to pray. And um, Pastor Andy would join us. I know they don't call you pastor. Brother Andy would join us. And the leaders, I invite you as well. Because I just sense God's spirit is working in this place. And many will want to be prayed for. And I cannot do that all by myself. And this is just to make the point. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. I don't do the work. The spirit does the work. And how wonderful it will be that you would just go home with a blessing. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to sing a song, a worship song. Engage with it. Even if Vicky's off key, don't mind her. She won't, but just in case. <laughs> you who have an ear to music, you're like, that doesn't sound right. Don't get distracted by that. That's all I'm saying. Just tune in, get connected, and get blessed so you can go out and be a witness for Jesus. Hallelujah.
I just like you to come to the front. We'll just pray with you. And then after that, we'll pray for people, healing, weakness, sickness, what, what have you. Okay? But just right now, you just feel God's just stirring something in you. I just want you to step forward. We agree with you in prayer and just bless what God is doing. Is that all right? You just feel that move of God's spirit. And as the, yeah, we just, Vicky will continue to sing. And then just step forward, step, step forward in faith. Um, yeah, so we can, we can just see you and pray with you. Thank you. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please just come forward so the leaders can pray with you as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Cornelius, would you please? Yeah. Oh, Cornelius. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of the living Jesus.
are still praying. Let's join together in, in our final prayer. Father God, as you lead us out onto our front lines, help us to love you, each other, and our communities. Release the gifts you've given us and invite others to meet with Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Have a, please do stay for a coffee or tea. It'd be great to chat. <laughs> and please don't forget to collect your children. <laughs>